All right, boys, what's up? It's good to be back. Um, after much request and many questions, I'm going to, um, I had a lot of interest in this. I'm just going to do a video on um, a headmaster valve, how they work and what they're used for. Um, we're coming into that season, which we all know the winter time and cold weather times are coming. So um, I know these can be confusing to some people. I'm going to try to explain this to the best of my ability and the best of my knowledge. Um, I may miss some things. Or something I hope I don't but if I do just don't uh, be all over me too much you know <laughs> but um yeah I'm gonna try to explain these and make this short and simple and um, explain it in everyday terms so hopefully um people can understand this I know I need things explained in like real life language not in like a classroom reading a book language so here we go all boys. right guys so here we are this is um this is just an old headmaster valve I pulled out it's from one of my video a couple videos back when I change that out, um, this is my spoiling book, one of them. This is a product, just a product catalog. I've got this in some class. I got a few of these from going to the classes over the years. But um, this is an Emerson valve, but, you know, they're all the same. They all work the same way. So, um, as you can see, there's different styles. Um, the style we're going to be really dealing with is like the LAC types right here. These ORD ones are different. Um, but we're going to go with, with this kind right now. And here's our diagram right here. This or this, like how these things will be working in your refrigeration system. So kind of bear with me. You have to picture this in a system. So we have R, which is for your receiver, D for your discharge or your bypass, and C for your condenser. So when you look at this diagram, this is your discharge line, okay? In normal refrigeration... A discharge gas is going to come out of our compressor, run through the condenser like it always does, and go up through the bottom, up through where it says C in our receiver, I mean into here, and then it's going to come right out down here into our receiver. And that's it. It's like this thing doesn't even come into play. Now, normally these are 180, 185 PSI. A lot of the newer systems are 210 PSI because they want them to run more efficiently, so they're running a higher head on them. But you can see this is a 185 valve that we had in this system. Okay? Now, when it gets cold out, we all know that you lose head pressure, especially if your fans constantly run. So we all know if you have low head pressure, you, your system isn't going to run right. So we want this system to maintain 185 PSI on your high side. So what's going to happen is when it starts cooling down and that head pressure starts getting low, once it starts getting to 170 down in there, this valve... This bulb senses the pressure and temperature outside, and it sort of just works like an expansion valve inside. It's gonna open up, and it's gonna allow this discharge gas to mix in with your already condensed gas here, your condensed liquid, and it's gonna go right into your receiver here. All it does is bypass. Remember that, it mixes just your discharge gas with your, mic with your condensed liquid and then it just goes into your receiver. And by doing that, because your discharge gas is higher, it will maintain your head pressure of 180, 185, 210, depending what these valves are set at. It's really all they do, guys. I mean, it's the same thing. You know, it, it's almost the same as an expansion valve. That's how I like to look at it. it I mean, it is a bit different, but it sort of operates the same. You got you ha your power head here and your sensing bulb. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, that's basically it. They can be mounted in like this, like do it by our diagram. It's mounted in horizontally. Doesn't make a difference. They all work the same. You know, so, so that's about it, guys, for that. And that's it. Now, to diagnose these, if these are bad, what they will do is sometimes the head pressure, like you'll come out there, you know, and you got like a unit's tripping out on head pressure. You don't know why. You're like, oh, what the heck? You know, my fans are running all this. It could be because you're, one of the issues could be because this headmaster is val bad. And what it's doing is this valve is wide open and the discharge gas is just going right into your receiver. It's not going through your condenser, so it can't cool the gas. These can either be stuck closed or open, just like an expansion valve can. Now, what you can normally do in an emergency situation, if this is stuck and I'm allowing a discharge gas to go through and not your condensed liquid, you can cut this here. We call it a pigtail. You can cut that and it relieves the pressure in here 
and it will allow this to mix better so you can maybe get them running through the night or something like that. I mean, that's pretty much how you diagnose them. You can also put your temperature probes on each line, compare the temperatures and see what they are. Obviously, the receiver side is supposed to be a lot cooler than the discharge side. If they're both around the same temperature, you know you got a problem. Your discharge line should be warm. It shouldn't be hot. And you can usually hear it too. If this is bypass drawing, you'll hear it hissing through the system. You know, it's a very distinct sound. You really can't mistake it. You can hear it down in the evaporator and everything. I want to mention too, what you can also do guys, if there isn't one installed already, um, is put in a, one of these condenser fan cycling controls. Say it's in the winter, you cut this, right? Your head pressure is still going to be too low. It could be, okay? So you want to you want to put in a fan cycling control to cycle your fan so it will keep that head pressure up. Now, the difference is when you use a fan cycle control, it's you have a big pressure swing. You have a temp differential. Like, say you have this at, um, like right now, this is just out of the box. It's set at like 275 and 40 or whatever. Usually you got to adjust them to make them perfect. But just go, say for instance, this was set on 250, right? with a 40 differential. That means that the fans are gonna come on at 250 and shut off about 210, and then the fans are still gonna spin a little bit. So you're gonna bring your pressure down to 200, maybe even less, especially in the cold weather, it's gonna bring it down even lower. It could, you know, so you've gotta maintain that head pressure, but you have a big, big pressure swing and a big differential. Like I said, it'll still work, but what these headmasters are, it maintains a constant pressure there's no fluctuation in your head pressure that's why you know they put these in a lot of outdoor units you know they like to maintain it and not have that um that big pressure swing but an emergency or a system that doesn't even have one of these and you're running too cold you got to put fan cycle controls in i mean we have these all over the place here sometimes you know a system with two fans you only cycle one sometimes you have to cycle both system with three or more fans you gotta sometimes three of them are on cycle controls and one always runs so it all depends on the application and the situation what you have but i wanted to add this in there too as well guys all right guys so that's pretty much it i mean i hope i explained everything good enough for you guys um any questions feel free you know of course obviously ask in the comments and myself or some other guys in the comments can i'm sure could help out and try to answer um i know the best way to explain these is to see it out in the field in a real life situation but I figured I'd just do a little bench top um explanation here with the diagram just to you know give you guys the basic idea of these I mean it's really a pretty simple thing um I know they can be very confusing I used to get confused when when I was learning about them I didn't you know I I had trouble with 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 everything really you know till you know how it works so like I said, any questions, feel free to ask, boys. Um, I'm going to try to get back on a regular schedule here. I haven't had much to film lately since I've been back to work, but you guys know I'll get stuff up when I can. So I appreciate it, guys, and I appreciate everything uh, sticking with me and all that. So till the next time, boys, I'll catch you on the next one.